guided us by the Quran and make it our guide, light and mercy. Allah, let us memorize what we've forgotten of it and educate us, educate us what we the ability to recite it, to recite it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to In the Light of the Quran. Today we have a new light that we'll take, we will take from a beautiful surah. Deals with the etiquettes that Muslims should have. Deals with the etiquettes that uh, distinguish us as Muslims from others. Uh, this surah called Surah Al-Hujurat. The Surah of the Chambers. These were the chambers of the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, meaning his house. Uh, each of his wives had a chamber, had a room for herself. So it deals with some of the etiquettes the Muslims should deal, uh, should use when dealing with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And even after his death, we will see how we can utilize them today. And it talks about some important issues in dealing with others. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom, a lot of light in these verses. We will try to take some of it and benefit from it and implement it in our lives. We will start with the recitation, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadayillahi wa rasoolih واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين واعلموا أن فيكم رسول الله لو يطيعكم في كثير من الأمر لعنتم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون فضلا من الله ونعمه والله عليم حكيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back to In the Light of the Quran Now this beautiful surah deals with a lot of the etiquettes that the Muslims should have It uh, first starts with a very important principle that Muslims are ought to benefit from Muslims really should try their best, exert themselves to 
uh, make this the way of life. Allah says, O you who believe, do not proceed, do not put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger and fear Allah. Allah is all hearing and Allah is all knowing. Now this important instruction tells us that we should not give precedence to our opinion. We should not give precedence to ourselves before Allah and His Messenger. And as believers, as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, no one will taste the sweetness of Iman until the first condition that Allah and His Messenger become more beloved to him than anybody else, even himself. Now, if we really have Iman and we have tasted, tasted the sweetness of Al-Iman, then this should be, uh, our practice should be that we give precedence to Allah and Prophet Muhammad before ourselves. And this is the attitude of the Muslim. So, so that when someone, something comes to me, an instruction from the Quran and the Sunnah comes to me, do that or don't do that, I shouldn't give precedence to my own opinion, to my own desires. No. What I do, I should submit to Allah and His Messenger and obey them. This is the first wisdom that we can take. Then Allah instructs the Muslims about a very important etiquette. He says, O you who believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know Prophet Muhammad lived in the Arabian Peninsula. There were so many Bedouins coming from the desert to al Madina, uh, and they would mix with the Muslims and they would come to ask Prophet Muhammad and ask from him. So these people, some of them were very harsh and they had very loud voices. And when they spoke with Prophet Muhammad, their voices would be very loud above the voice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this, this is a sign of lack of respect. This is why Allah does not, doesn't want the Muslims to raise their voices above the voice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is etiquette. You see how the Muslim character should be? We should be mild, gentle and soft and we should be good to the others. Show respect. Uh, give the people their due worth, the, the respect that they deserve. So these people were reprimanded by Allah that they should not raise their voices above the voice of Prophet Muhammad and they should not speak loud when they talk to him lest their actions will be uh, wiped off and their good deeds will go into vain, will go to waste without them realizing that. So the etiquettes are very important in Islam. They might cause our actions, our good deeds to be uh, taken away or the benefit of them, the reward of them to be taken away. Now, Somebody might say, now this is the case when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was alive. What about it today? What can, how can we apply these verses today? The way we can apply these verses is by the fact when we hear a hadith from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, someone says to us, we want to do something, someone comes and gives us, gives us advice. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said this and that. The person who gives us this or narrates this statement, we should not raise our voice above his voice because these are the words of Prophet Muhammad. Second thing, we should accept them. If they are authentic, if it is, a, it is an authentic hadith, we accept that. So we still practice this wonderful etiquette. Then Allah says, those who lower their voices in the presence of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, these are the ones that Allah has purified, whose hearts Allah has purified. Allah purified the hearts and He put shyness in them. And He put in, in the hearts the understanding that they should respect Prophet Muhammad because He is the one who guided us. He is the one who brought the light to us. He is the one who told, gave us this light from the Qur'an. So Allah says those people, their hearts were purified by Allah and Allah put piety and righteousness in their hearts. And then Allah says, for them will be forgiveness and a great reward. Then Allah mentioned the example of certain people who used to come to Prophet Muhammad and try to call him from his house. So they used to raise their voices saying, Oh Muhammad, Oh Muhammad. They would keep calling the name of Prophet Muhammad until he came out. And that really bothered Prophet Muhammad. Sometimes he was sleeping, sometimes he was resting, sometimes he was coming even to them, but they didn't give him enough time to come. So they kept shouting and calling Prophet Muhammad This is why Allah says, And had they just remained patient, until you could come out to them, then it would have been better for them. Allah is teaching the Muslims the etiquettes. Imagine Allah is cultivating the Muslims because that generation was the generation who, that up, upheld the message of Islam and uh, defended it and spread it to the world. So Allah wanted, wanted them to have the best of manners, the best of character, the best of conduct. So then Allah says that Allah is forgiving and Allah is merciful then Allah taught us something very important that we should use in our lives. Allah says, O you who believe, if a wrongdoer comes to you, 
if a wrongdoer comes to you with some news, or someone who does evil, he comes to you with the news, someone we know some weakness in him, he comes to you with news, then be patient. Be patient. Do not act according to that news until you verify it. Lest you may harm some people unjustly, then you will regret that. So when some news comes to us, we should always verify it, especially from someone who's unreliable. Someone unreliable comes to us with news, okay, your friend said this and that about you. Then you take a stance against him. That's wrong. You should verify that news before you act according to it. Why? Because it might be wrong. Maybe this person did not understand what happened exactly. Maybe he's telling you his own interpretation. So we Muslims should verify and we should seek the truth in all our affairs, in all matters, so that we don't wrong other people, we don't offend them, we don't harm them, we don't cause damage to them. This should be the attitude of the Muslim. And this is a wonderful wisdom, a wonderful light that we can take it in our behavior in dealing with people. When news comes to us about everything, in all our affairs, even the news that comes through the news agencies and on the media and the, new, and the news bulletins, we don't take that for granted. We verify it. And we don't act according to that. The Muslim only acts based on certainty. We take what is true, the real knowledge, the real news that is verified, we take it, we act upon that, that's fine. But if we take any news from anyone, now that's wrong. This is why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, it's enough lying that the person falls into when he relates everything he heard. Don't relate, don't narrate everything you heard. You have to verify things. You have to put things to, you have to check things out, verify that they are correct, that they are true. Then Allah reminds the believers by saying, and know that among you is Prophet Muhammad. Have knowledge that among you is the messenger of Allah. He is the he's not just a normal human being. He's a human being in his, uh, in his physical needs and his psychological as a human being. He has the traits of human beings. But Allah has favored him with the message of Islam. Allah conveyed to him. Allah made him his messenger. This is a great privilege. So you should show him respect. You should show him love. You should appreciate that he is present among you. And then Allah says, if the Prophet were to follow you in most of your opinions, then this would bring you to suffer. Because we human beings, we, as, we, as we always say, we have a limited vision. We have our own limitations. So we always fall into a mistake, we always fall into error. So Allah sent the message through Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or with Prophet Muhammad so that to guide us to show us the truth, that we shouldn't follow our desires and our ambitions and whims. No, but we follow the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah says, uh, and talks about His mercy and the, His bounty upon us. And then He said, Allah made iman, Allah made faith and belief beloved to your heart. Allah caused your hearts to love the religion of Islam, to love faith and belief in Allah. And Allah adorned it in your heart so that you get to it and you try your best to increase in it and Allah made disbelief abhorrent to you Allah made, made you caused you to hate it these are from the graces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us Allah said these people who achieve these traits will be the successful on the day of judgment we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those and to benefit from this light that we find in this wonderful surah until we meet with another light from this wonderful book of Allah we uh, leave you in peace wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Pardon us by the Quran. Allah, pardon us by the Quran. Ability to recite it, to recite it.